Igniting possibilities with DBS Asian Insights. From hype to hope, will this year finally translate into reality for the Internet of Things? Martin Song finds out as we kick off our Asia Tomorrow series. This is the new normal, where your devices talk to each other and collect data. IDC forecasts that the world in 2020 will have 29 and a half billion connected things forming a $3 trillion market opportunity. And the Asia Pacific is at the front line when it comes to the Internet of Things. We we're forecasting that Australia and Korea will be at around 11 connections per person. And at that same time, while China is going to be massive and accounting for nearly 60% of the entire market, they're only going to be at four connections per person. So while China is the biggest market, the most mature ones are definitely over in Australia and South Korea. And it's at home where the battleground will be over the next year, with smart homes slowly forming building blocks of smart city projects around the world. Samsung Electronics wants to be a big player in this space, hoping to link up all devices by 2017. Our plan is to convert most of our products to IoT-enabled products. What that means is that products will become connected uh, not only connected by itself or to the internet, it really means connected to your lifestyle. And how does the South Korean electronics giant plan to go about doing it? Well, for starters, it acquired Smart Things, an open platform for smart home devices, hoping to address a key issue for the industry, an open ecosystem. When you looked at mobility and enterprise mobility more specifically, everybody tried to own it themselves, and they didn't want to partner because they viewed that that would actually damage their brand or their strength in the market. What we see with IoT is because it's such a diverse ecosystem, they realize that they can partner with people who might have a competitive offering, but more likely it's gonna be something similar to what they do. Um, and when they do that, they can start driving these solutions. So it's providing this open ecosystem. Samsung has also addressed this with its SIM band smart watch, which is an open platform for developers. South Korea, where we are now, is one of the most mature and developed markets for the Internet of Things, primed for an explosion of gadgets and devices for millions of tech-savvy consumers. But ironically for companies, one of their biggest challenges is helping consumers get over the hype. And separating that hype from reality is the three trillion dollar question. I think there is hype around it, um, but I think there's also a lot of value. And I think what needs to change is right now, um, the industry as a whole is pushing out its technologies as technologies instead of pushing them out as solutions. One of the things that we're focusing on is making IoT and the concept of IoT as well as, as, well as the communication of the IoT simple and almost common sense-like to consumers. Only when consumers are willing to change their behaviors, I think, this uh, IoT paradigm will succeed into the next level. And as we move towards further automation of our next actions, the challenge for the industry is to monetize it. Martin Sung, CNBC, Seoul. And for more on our Asia Tomorrow special series, uh, don't forget uh, you can head to our website, uh, cnbc.com, and the Asia Tomorrow series right there and click on that page. Okay, we're going to go to break here on Squawk, but coming up next, uh, political angst and surprise central bank moves along with a U.S. love fest and growth to rival China. What's next for Sri Lanka? We'll get an exclusive look at speaking to the finance minister right after this. Igniting possibilities with DBS Asian Insights.